everyone and welcome back to the Ellie Way Show where uh, we are discussing all things lifestyle, adulting, and business. Um, I'm Ellie and today we're going to be talking about um, just a few things. We're going to be catching up. Um, I'm going to be answering some of your questions. I asked you guys a while ago um, to send in some questions so that I can chat with you guys and catch up. Um, it's been a little bit of a minute since I have come on um, and chatted with you all so I am looking forward to that. Um, just a couple things. I wanted to remind you that you can support The Ellie Way Show by going to anchor.fm slash The Ellie Way um, with uh, the dashes in between. Um, you can give as little as 99 cents a month to 9.99 per month, a small um, little bit of support, and you can cancel at any time for free, of course. Um, but basically, this will help sustain the show and help us level up the podcast, fund future online courses, and more. Um, you can also download my free ebook uh, now the ballet basics handbook on lifeonpoint.org slash shop um, i'm going to be chatting a little bit about that um, in this episode and uh, i want to remind you to subscribe to the show on whatever platform you're listening to and you can follow us at the ellie way on instagram so i'm really excited to get into this it's been a while since i've chatted with you guys so we'll see how long this um this episode is but basically um yes we've changed the name of the um the show it's the ellie way show now i've pretty much branded everything under the Ellie Way and Life on Point. Life on Point is um, strictly dedicated toward dance, uh, towards dance education, towards my teaching, um, towards dancing. Um, just really, you know, I'm passionate about educating people, um, especially in this next generation, to change the dance scene in the sense of changing the culture. You know, there's such a toxic culture with dance. Um, and, you know, I went through all that and I'm so happy to see so many people that are actually stepping in to help create that change. And so um, I want that to be a space really for dancers specifically. But the Ellie Way is, you know, everything else that I love from adulting to business to, um, you know, lifestyle and, you know, whatever the case may be, what that looks like. And so many people ask me about those things, but it's also for me, it's really important to have that dance um, side of things as well. So yeah, we're just going to be chatting it up today. I hope you guys are all doing well. The last episode I published was, um, I think it was maybe July 30th was when I recorded it. I think I published it that same day as well. And um, it was in my 818 business chat group. Uh, in Facebook and of course on this podcast as well. It's been a while since I've uh, filmed or recorded an episode and yet so much has happened. So um, one of the things that I'm going to be talking about is school. Um, I started school. Um, I started picking up my business again in full force. Um, there's been a lot of changes and a lot of um, just a lot of stuff going on. I mean, as if there's never not enough going on in my life. Um, there's definitely been a lot going on. And so I want to share a little bit about what's up in my life with you guys. Um, so I'm going to get into some of your questions and we'll just kind of go from there to be honest um because um some of these questions are really good and they're kind of relevant to what's going on right now so um one of the questions is can i be a special guest this came from my friend and um yes the answer is yes i'm going to be bringing on a couple of my friends to um just have some fun conversations like conversations and talk a little bit about um what they do who they are why they you know what different types of um you know, hobbies they have, lifestyle things, things like that. You know, it's going to be fun and talking a lot about friendship. Um, that's a big thing that I think is really important to discuss, especially. Um, I sp I, it's just there's something about friendship in this time that I think has been a little misconstrued um, because ev the world is just such a strange place right now. And so I really value the friendships I have. And so I wanted to, you know, open up the conversation with them a little bit um, about friendship and things like that. So It'll be really fun. Um, the next question is, what made you go from a professional ballet dancer to getting your BA in dance uh, in dance teaching? So, um, long story short, <laughs> um, I 
finished out my season with um, a ballet company in Pasadena, Pasadena Dance Theater, and I finished out the Nutcracker with them in 2019. And um, I moved back home after that. I was really tore up from the year I had had. 2019 was a really um, horrible year for me um, on a lot of levels, relationally, physically, dance-wise, business, like money, everything. Um, I was a mess to say the least. And so, um, in 2020, I decided, okay, I'm going to take a long break from dance and figure out what I want to do in September. Well, COVID hit, um, in 29, uh, in 2020. Um, so I was like, all right, this is giving me the break that I guess I need. So I did a bit of at home bar work. I did, um, you know, I stayed fit. I stayed in, in shape and things like that. And, um, got out of the house when I needed to just on walks and things like that. And, um, so then I really, I mean, honestly, it's a God story. So I'm going to be talking about that a little bit too. Um, so really it was a God story. Um, I, um, my, the studio that I teach at currently, um, called me up and was like, Hey, um, we lost our ballet teachers. What are you doing right now? And I said, I'm doing nothing. I'm, uh, administrating the school for my dad, but that's about it. It's part time. And, um, other than that, I'm not really doing anything right now. And so she asked me, she said, Hey, do you want to come teach for me? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So I went and taught for them in October. And around that time, um, I was still kind of struggling with dance, but I had already begun like a healing process with it. So I, um, I went to the Lord and I was just like, if I never dance again, you know, I will be fine for the rest of my life. And, um, to be honest, that was where I was at. And so he said, I will tell you when to pick up the shoes. Well, three people, uh, had texted me in one week span saying it's time to pick up the shoes, which they had no idea what that meant. And it was very hilarious because I obviously knew what it meant because the Lord had spoken to me saying, hey, this is, you know, it's time. So I picked it up and I fell in love with the kids that I teach. A lot of them I knew from years and years ago, dancing with some of them and some of them I had seen when they were babies, but I never really knew them. So now I'm their teacher, which was kind of a funny thing. So in, um, I want to say it was either November or December um, uh, of 2020, the Lord said, Hey, um, you know, go ahead and go to school and go, you know, and he told me exactly where to go. Royal Academy of Dance. Um, he said, you're going to get their, ba- your bachelor's degree with them in dance education and you're going to do it. And I had no idea at the time that, um, Royal Academy of Dance even had, um, university affiliated programs, let alone, um, bachelor's, you know, in specifically dance education. So I applied um, and I was rejected and um, I didn't have all the qualifications they needed. And then I was like, all right, well, you told me to go to school, so I guess you're going to make a way. Well, the money came through um, that I needed. Um, We I found the money to help me out uh, pay for college. And um, so I was like, okay, well, that's set. So Lord in your timing. And so over the summer, I reapply or over the spring, I reapplied again uh, of this year and I got accepted. And long story short, um, I have, you know, obviously I have high school transcripts. I've taken AP English and AP History because I love those two. But I did not take SATs or ACTs because I was dead set on becoming a professional ballet dancer and not actually going to school. So college was not even on my radar and neither was getting a degree for teaching. So I mean, it was always my backup. But of course, when you're thinking in high school, like, you know, that's not your priority is, you know, thinking about your backup plan when you're really training solely on the thing that you're going to be doing. So to make a very long story short, I got in over the summer and I started my bachelor's degree, um, this past week, um, two weeks ago, uh, by the time this comes out. So yeah, I'm vlogging about it. I vlogged the first week and the second week and it has been such a journey. It's been, um, it really was a God story. So the reason why, um, I decided to switch, you know, careers in a way is not necessarily because I wanted to switch careers. However, um, 
I want to be part of the change. I said it earlier. I want to be part of the change. I experienced a lot of abuse um, in uh, company situations and um, freelance situations and as a student. And I really wanted to ensure that that would not happen to the kids that I ever taught as long as I taught there. Um, and so my, um, I, that was my mission. And so my mission is to really change the culture of dance one studio at a time. And if I, whether that means I stay at the same studio and I control the culture in the sense of not me making all the decisions, but me setting an example, leading by example. We talk a lot about that with business. It's the same way in every other area of life. Leading by example, leading your classroom with kindness and authority and discipline, but not being mean, not being rude, being kind, being considerate of their psychological and emotional needs of the kids so that was really you know something that I had thought about and you know of course in the back of my mind I was like oh like maybe one day I'd start a studio maybe I'd start a company and I didn't really think oh yeah like let's go to college to figure that out so really the reason why I'm going to college is because the Lord told me to and he opened the door for me to but also you know as I was applying for it, I realized how important it is for me and what I want to do. And so I'm just really excited about what I'm learning already. Already it's only been like a week and a half of, you know, actual classes and tasks and doing um, work. And I have learned so much. And my I know that by the end of this program, I'm going to be teaching, you know, at exponential levels. Um I'm getting quick revelation and not in the sense of like spiritual revelation, but just my mind is getting um, is understanding more and more about what they're talking about. So that is definitely um, something that I was excited about. And um, it's something I am excited about. Um, I haven't been in school in a really long time, but I'm looking forward to this next season and what um, what I'm going to learn, what God's going to do and all these types of things. So um yeah so that's how I did a career change and I absolutely love teaching I love working with kids I work with kids of all ages um and I I just love it I've always loved kids I've always had a special place in my heart for kids but I think it really just made a huge um I don't know something I think it, it really clicked for me like being a teacher is what I want to do being and the thing is is that the other thing too is like sometimes kids spend more time at school and at extracurricular activities than they do with their own families and so I want to make sure that I'm responsible for um in some ways, teachers are responsible for the upbringing of kids because, you know, if you have two parents that have nine to five jobs or are working more than that um, and they don't really have a whole lot of time to really dedicate to caretaking their kids, that oftentimes falls on the teachers um, and the you know, leaders of, you know, and the voices in these kids' lives, which, you know, is it supposed to? You know, who knows? But it is the case. And so, that was just something that um, I'm really passionate about is creating a safe environment for kids of all ages, whether they're, you know, preschoolers all the way up to young adults. Um, my 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 philosophy is creating a safe space and really helping them see opportunity for what's out there and for them to dream big and to help them um, to help encourage them to go after those things and to show them, hey, this is what you can do to do that. This is what you can do to do this. And so that's what I'm really passionate about. And so I really feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, um, doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. And I love everything I do. I'm very, very excited about it. Um, the next question is, what's a lesson you've learned about adulting that you would share with a senior in high school? Ooh, <laughs> That's a good one. Be wise with your money. Be wise with your money. Um, especially nowadays, California just passed a law where they are going to be taxing our mileage. It's estimated to be about 80 cents per mile that you drive every year. So um, if that is not uh, a wake up call enough, um, I that's my that's my advice. Be wise with your money. Be mindful of where your money is going. Um, subscriptions really eat away your your finances. Beware of fast cash. 
um, building businesses, um, be very mindful of multi-level marketing companies um, because it can drain not just your bank account but you as a person because of how much time you're putting into it and this is coming from someone that is in business and that has worked in multi-level marketing um, and is a product of multi-level marketing. My mom is in multi-level marketing for 15 years I want to say and um yeah so it's you know we're not now thank goodness um because we just wouldn't have the time to be sane um if that was the case but yeah um i would be really mindful about money and the second thing is um don't put too many expectations on yourself and don't let the expectations of others bring you down um but i will say that a lot of the expectations i had um about myself um or a lot of the expectations I felt like I had that were put on me by quote unquote other people were actually not always from other people. It was me putting those expectations on me. So be very aware of where your expect where the expectations um, are coming from. And yeah, I would say be hopeful um, of your future, but also be realistic. Um, you have to find a balance between the two. For me, I am very much a skeptic. Um, I, <laughs> I do, I am not the most positive person on the planet. You can ask my mom. Um, you can ask anybody that knows me very well. I am very much a skeptic. I am very much what people would consider a realist um so i really have to work on the balance of having hope and faith for things that i um, don't necessarily see so that is my advice for somebody that is coming in high school um just you know take it slow don't worry about you know going straight into college take a gap year if you need to respect your what you need um you know figure out what you need but also don't shut out all the voices um of people pouring into you and speaking to you um, why do you do so much? <laughs> um, great question. Um, not sure. Um, mostly because God tells me to do things and I lay down the things he tells me not to. This is probably, um, the season where I'm doing the least amount of things. Um, I'm teaching dance. I am working mostly with kids. Um, and I'm administrating a school and I'm going to school. So that's only four things. Usually it's way more than that. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm a very much, I'm very much a fast paced person. I'm very much a fast paced person. And so I like um, the speed of life that I'm at um, currently for the time being. I know it's not going to be like this forever, but I'm taking full advantage of my youth <laughs> and I'm going to do as much as I can um, for as long as I can um, up to this point, unless the Lord tells me not to. Are you going to come out with more books slash a course? I am. Um, I mentioned it earlier in the intro um, that you supporting my podcast is actually going to help me be able to fund these projects that I have on hand. Um, if I can fund those projects, then I can do them and it's a lot easier to kind of... Um, kind of take care of if that makes sense so um yeah definitely it's gonna be a lot easier um to do those things and um with that extra support but I am working on an outline course right now um there's one that's administrative not necessarily administrative I wouldn't call it administrative but it's more about getting your life together um it's um just getting your stuff together like <laughs> getting your life together is probably the the best way to describe it it's um going to be calendar organization it's going to be talking about um you know if you are a roommate or you have a house or an apartment and you're renting and you don't have time to clean simple things like that it's going to talk a lot about um you know um just just adulting type things you know lessons I wish I had learned about adulting um that helped me today that a lot of people ask me about so they're specific to the questions that people ask me about that I'm really strong in um none of it is going to be like financial advice um none of it is going to be things like that although I might point you to a certain um like a specific direction on um you know how how can you better manage your finances and things like that? Um, I do have a dance course coming out here pretty soon, probably by the end of the year for Christmas. And then I also am writing a book. It's going to be a full on book. Um, 
maybe one day it will be published um but obviously that is more of a long-term project it's short term still but it's more of a long-term project um so yeah that's uh what's in the works when did you start singing and playing the piano this is a really good question. I don't share a lot of my piano and singing work because um, it's definitely a hobby for me and it's not something that I want to be pushed in. Um, I like going at my own pace with um, music and things like that. Um, it's definitely fun for me. It's a fun thing that I can pick up when I can and put down when I have to. And it's something that brings me joy and something that brings me um, peace and something that helps me relax actually. Actually. So I started, um, I was a kid. There's a very specific video when I was little. Um, and I love singing and I loved playing the piano. And so I took piano lessons for a couple of years. I probably was like seven, eight, nine. And then, um, this was simultaneously when I had started ballet. So at the point of being nine, it was like, okay, you're doing art lessons, you're doing ballet lessons and you're doing piano lessons something's got to give here you got to pick one so I chose ballet because I was most passionate about ballet and at that point I kind of hated piano um I was learning more like classical notation and things like that and I didn't really want to I just wanted to play chords and nowadays I I don't necessarily kick myself for um for not sticking with piano um but I do sometimes think I'm like man like how would have that gone? Like, how, how would have that gone? And, you know, how would have that worked if I just stuck with it? And, you know, um, so now I'm just self-taught. Um, I started, pick, I picked it up back um, over quarantine um, when quarantine first started because me and my friends would stay up really late over FaceTime. My friend Corey would play the guitar. Um, me and my friend Ari would sing. And we were hoping that once COVID was over, we would get together and we would do like a you know, singing musical type of the thing. So, um, so yeah, it was really fun. It was really fun. Um, so it was, it's, it's definitely really good for me. Um, you seem so happy in your relationship. Can you tell us more about it? Thank you. I am. Um, I am very happy in my relationship and one of these days I will bring my boyfriend on for you guys to meet him. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, it is definitely something that has been, there's been many ups and downs like every other relationship, but I think the main thing that we both are really intentional about is one, communication, and two, choosing each other every day. Um, and I think those two things alone are the things that keep us going. <laughs> um, and, you know, outside of God and, you know, obviously things like that, but it has been very difficult. There's been, there's been some difficult things that have happened that, um, we've had to walk through and it's not been, always been easy. And, um, I'm not the most patient person. And so I get a little impatient and bless his heart. He's incredibly patient and he, you know, deals with so much of, um, me and my emotions and my craziness and my crazy whirlwind. And so, but he loves me so well and I do my best to love him as well as I can. Um, but yeah, huge thing, communication and choosing each other every day. Um, and really, you know, that's, that's a whole basis of marriage as well is like if you, and that's something I have learned. That's a positive thing out of all the marriages that I've ever been around is you have to communicate and you have to choose each other every day. It's a choice. Love is not a feeling. Love is a choice. And to me, that is a huge thing. Um, you know, I base what love is out of um, scripture, which is 1 Corinthians 13, 4 um, through 8. Is love is patient. Love is kind. It does not boast. It does not envy. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. Um, it does not delight in evil but it rejoices in the truth it bears all things it hopes all things it believes all things it um I think yeah, there's a few other things that it, it, it does and then it says love never fails and so um that is what I base my love off of and nowhere in there does it say love feels amazing like no love is a choice <laughs> love is a choice to not snap at your partner when you're having a bad day love is a choice of choosing to you know 
not let your insecurity get in the way and let him go do his thing, you know, and we have very different lives and, you know, a lot of people worry about that, but, um, you know, it works for us. And so without saying a whole lot, um, those are the two things I've really learned a lot about and we are very intentional in our relationship and that is something I am very, very proud of. Um, I, a lot of people, look at our relationship when I say that the two things that we both are very intentional about is communicating and uh, choosing each other every day. They're like, wow, those are (laughs) like, that's very mature. Um, And so, yeah, I mean, one of these days I'll bring them on. We can have a conversation about it and share with you guys a little bit more about it. But we are very happy and um, we we know that, um, you know, one day we are going to you know, hopefully get married and start a family. And we know that, um, you know, that's something we want to do, but we also have a couple of things that we want to make sure are done. Um, we want to make sure that there's a couple of things that are completed and, um, there's a couple of like school, um, and there's a couple of things that we just want to fall into place before we take that step. So, um, we're not really necessarily in any rush right now. We're in a great spot and we just, you know, we love the Lord together and I couldn't ask for anything more. So, um, this question is, what do you love about teaching? Um, I love that I get to one pour into someone's life, um, and teach them something new. I love seeing a kid get it. And I love seeing a kid, um, or a young adult, um, just, just really realize, um, how, wonderful something is or realize how great something is or realize just the realization of I can do this and it brings so much joy to me um not because I'm an amazing teacher but because I'm calling out what's already in them that's my job as a teacher is to share with them okay this is my knowledge but it's already inside of you so how do we get it from inside of you to manifest in the real world um and so it's so exciting to work with you know I have this one student I work with privately I've worked with her since I started teaching at this studio and um I did her audition tape with her and I did privates with her and she just she improved so much and I'm just so proud of her and she is just an incredible girl and she is so full of light and I love seeing her get it every single time she gets so excited and it is so it's so just wonderful there's there's something so beautiful about that celebration of these, you know, young ones realizing that they can do something. And that is what I love about teaching. And I I just, I don't know, I love kids. I just, I've I've always loved kids. I've always um, just been so like, um, I, I always knew that if, if dance didn't work out for me, I'd want to be a teacher. And I thought I was going to be a school teacher, but, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm very passionate about, um, teaching kids to be the best thing that they can be. And I learned so much from, from ballet. I mean, I learned discipline and I learned, you know, I learned how to push through very hard times. I learned perseverance. I learned endurance. I learned so many valuable and important lessons. And so, you know, sometimes like part of changing the dance culture is sometimes not doing so much movement and just having a conversation sitting down and saying hey look this is an issue let you know there's issues going on in the world let's address this and you know I love that because that was set for me as an example by actually the studio owner um there was a long time ago we were in a modern class our friend had just committed suicide this was uh, I think oh my gosh is is it almost It was in 2014, so it was, we're in 2021, so it was like seven years ago um, or so, and, you know, it was a very hard week, and we did not do class. I mean, we did. We went to class. We all sat down. We all did these things, and she just opened up the floor and was like, what's going on in your guys' heads right now? Like, and she cared for us as humans and she understood what we needed emotionally and psychologically. And she prioritized that above giving us a class. And then at the end, you know, at the end, she was like, all right, improv, you know, and, and so that was really, 
it was so great to have that example be set. And I've had teachers also, you know, other than her, my, um, that have really just, um, been there for me in, in ways. And so my, my teachers often, you know, my teachers are now some of my greatest friends. You know, my, my ballet teacher of 15 years is one of my great friends. We talk to this day for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> and my ballet master and I are great, great friends. And, you know, bless him. He just retired. And I'm just, I'm so excited for the next season of life for him. Um, my, you know, studio owner currently was a teacher. She was my modern teacher. Um, and I just adore her so much. She's an amazing human. And, you know, I just, every teacher that has really poured into my life like that is really just, um, you know, is a friend. And so it has been just such a blessing to, um, to be a teacher and to be a friend and to be a listening ear when people need it and things like that. And to help also change some of that dynamic in, in the studio space, as far as, you know, I'm not screaming at them and I'm not telling them that they suck. You know, I'm telling them like, hey, let's engage. Let's engage. Let's figure this out. I'm going to teach you how to think critically and I'm going to teach you how to think. You know, I'm going to teach you um, not necessarily what to think, but I want you to challenge like these things. I want you to think about how things work, you know, because not just for dance, but you're going to use this in life. Like I hated critical thinking in high school and now it's all I do as a teacher and it's all I do as a student who is now studying, you know, frameworks and fundamentals of dance, you know. And so, um, yeah, so it's, it's just, it's so cool. I, I love teaching and I respect teachers so much. If you're, if you're a teacher and you're listening to this, I just so appreciate everything that you're doing, whether you're a ballet teacher, you're in the school system, whatever the case may be. I so appreciate you and your time. You really are, um, a superhero and you really are, um, you know, I just honor you so much. So shout out to all the teachers, man. Um, what made you go into business? Um, I actually went into business because the running joke and sadly the truth was ballet dancers make no money. <laughs> so I uh, took a business class in uh, high school and um, I completed the course. Um, it was at, a, um, I think it was like a junior college level course and um, kind of like a uh, hybrid for, you know, junior college slash uh, high schoolers. So I took that course and I decided business was a route for me. And um, my dad has done a lot in society as far as um, behind the scenes of, you know, arts and entertainment stuff and media stuff and government stuff and business stuff. And I maybe am not supposed to say all that, but my dad, my dad has done a lot. And so I have seen, um, especially on the business side of things, um, what he's done on the business side. And so I just decided, you know, that's something I definitely wanted to do. So, um, someone said your friends are pilots and I think that's so cool. Do you ever get scared flying with them? I actually don't fly with them very often. Um, however, um, for my 21st birthday, my friend Jaden, um, uh, my boyfriend, John, my friend Sky, and I took a flight to San Diego. We met, um, my best friend, Audria, who's also our young adults pastor. We rented a house, me and Audria, uh, room together and it was great. Um, it was actually smoother than plane rides I've had on big commercial jets. Um, the landing, you barely felt it. It was, they were so smooth. I feel 100% safe with them, um, flying and, um, yeah, I know that they are totally, um, I know they're totally, um, equipped to know what to do in case of emergency. And so it's really, really great. Um, yeah, I, I love having them. It's definitely, it definitely makes interesting conversation on my end because, you know, it's obviously a field I know nothing about. Um, it's a trade I know nothing about. And so over the past three years, um, since I've been involved with this friend group and, um, just being around. And of course my boyfriend is a pilot. So, um, being in a relationship with him, I learn a lot about aviation. And so, um, so we joke now and we say she probably knows enough about aviation to, um, you know, fly a plane if she had to. So it was very interesting. It's, it's very fascinating to me. It's, it's a lot of boring lingo, but I definitely, 
understand a lot about um you know what they're talking about now it's not like a foreign language um so it's it's really fun i i really enjoy hearing that i really enjoy asking questions and it's good for them because um most of them are flight instructors and so it's good for um for them to be challenged in that way i suppose so yeah, I mean, it is it is really cool, and I have some really awesome friends. I have some really cool friends, and um, yeah, I've, I'm not scared of flying with them. Not at all. Not at all. Um, and then the last question is, what's something cool God's been doing in your life? Well, recently, he actually was filling my gas tank. So um, what I mean by that is literally, I went my... Um, uh, two weeks ago, I do a lot of driving as it is. So two, a couple weeks ago, I got gas and my gauge and my mileage kept fluctuating between like 380, 415, 380, 430, if 38, you know, three, 300 to like 380. And so, um, so I thought something was wrong with my gauge and my mileage because, you know, I have a car that has a lot of, um, electronic components, I guess, um, on the screen. And then I have, um, of course the gas gauge. So it was rising and falling for about like a week and a half. And I was like, this is really interesting. So I went to get my car checked because it was maintenance time anyway. And they were like, oh, no, right now you have like a complete full tank of gas. So I was like, that's crazy. So I realized the Lord was filling my gas tank, literally. And so I did not have to get gas for about two and a half weeks, (laughs) which is a miracle because I, again, drive a lot. And um yeah, it's, it's, you know, one of my favorite testimonies to share right now, because I'm like, I, you know, obviously gas is really expensive right now. I mean, I think the cheapest place right now is maybe like 394. And um, you have to have a membership to get in. (laughs) So, um, but everywhere else is um, at least everywhere else is at least $4.35, if not higher. And so it has just been the gas, my, the gas prices right now are just insane. I mean, don't even get me started on it, but, um, yeah, so that was a miracle and that's something God is doing in my life as far as miracles and signs and wonders are concerned. Um, you know, God's doing so much in my life. He's speaking to me. He's providing so many opportunities for me. He, um, we just got done with a global leaders, uh, network meeting. My dad has, um, he is the founder of a, uh, organization. Um, he's the founder of a network. I'm sorry. And he, um, basically we have, I think it's like 115 people from all over the world. Um, and they just came to Bakersfield. We just had three days of meetings and just what God's doing in the world is just so amazing. I mean, it's, it's so, so cool, um, to hear everything that people are doing. And these are people from, you know, just doing incredible things like facing death every day to save kids from, you know, child slavery, um, whether it be sexual exploitation or child soldiers, um, to people just equipping and training people in fashion and, um, and seeing God move there to, you know, people in the media world, to people in the government industry, um, of all different types of governments all over the world. So it's just, it's been so, it's been a whirlwind of a last week, but it was so, so good. And, um, you know, it's just, it's so great. I mean, everything that people were talking about, what God is doing, you know, when, what God is doing in other people's lives, um, you know, I know that it's for a greater purpose. And so for, for me, when people ask me like, what's God doing in your life? God is doing so much in my life. <laughs> like I could give you a mile long list of things that God is doing in my life and it is incomprehensible. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's so many things that he's doing that I'm just so honored that he would do. So, um, well, yeah, so I've just answered all the questions that were asked and I'm just so, um, I'm just so honored that you guys asked me these questions and I love that you guys listen to this podcast. I want to shout out, um, a couple of people. Um, I want to shout out some listeners. We've got listeners from the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, Australia, Singapore, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, Malaysia, Denmark, Sweden, the United Arab Emirates, and India. It is such an honor to have such a wide range of listeners, and um, I'm so honored. Thank you so much for listening, and for um, if you're on YouTube for watching, um, I appreciate
appreciate you guys so much. Again, if you'd like to support this co- um, this podcast, please go to anchor.fm slash the dash Ellie dash way. Um, you can support again for as little as 99 cents a month or to nine ninety nine cents uh, $9.99 a month. Um, you can also support this podcast by continue listening. So definitely subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to. Um, I'd love to get in contact with you. So message us uh, through Anchor, the um, our Anchor site. Um, and I would love to uh, have a chat with you. So yeah, I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening to uh, the Ellie show. And I cannot wait to uh, have our next chat. So love you all and I'll see you soon. Bye.